Complete Colpectomy and Copoclysis, a model for simulation. A collaborative effort between University Hospitals Case Medical Center and Metro Health Medical Center. The largest population growth in the U.S. is women over 60, and in their lives, up to 10% will have pelvic organ prolapse surgery. Hence, there is an increase in patients with pelvic organ prolapse surgery in their 70s and 80s with medical comorbidities who are not sexually active. And for such patients with previously failed prolapse surgery or pessary trials, obliterative procedures may be indicated. In general, there are two types of obliterative procedures for pelvic organ prolapse. The Lefort colpoclysis in patients with a uterus and the complete colpectomy with colpoclysis in patients with a previous hysterectomy. In the United States, there is limited exposure to colpoclysis in residency. Providers that have graduated less than 10 years ago are less likely to offer colpoclysis than otherwise. In our two hospitals, graduating residents have performed one to three colpoclysis as surgeon. Therefore, the purpose of this video is to describe a simple model for a complete colpoclysis. The supplies needed to construct the model include cotton balls, a sock which serves as the vaginal epithelium, pantyhose which is the fibromuscular connective tissue, surgical instruments, sutures, glue, a marking pen, and a pelvic model that's optional. The total cost, excluding instruments, is $5. To set up the model, we stuff the cotton balls into the pantyhose, our fibular muscular connective tissue, as seen here. Glue is then copiously applied to the fibromuscular muscular connective tissue and covered with a sock, the vaginal epithelium, as depicted. Once constructed, we are ready to begin the procedure. We begin by attaching Alice clamps to the apex of the prolapse. We then draw rectangles for anterior and posterior dissection from the apex to the hymen. The planes are then hydro dissected using lidocaine with epinephrine or vasopressin. We now place figure of eight sutures at the corners of the apex, which will serve as the margins for an epithelial island that we will create for orientation. We now denude the vaginal epithelium from its fibromuscular connective tissue circumferentially, starting with rectangles, anteriorly and posteriorly, to the level of the hymenal ring leaving the island behind. The sides are then excised bilaterally. In this model, we use the Mayo scissors, but Metzenbaum scissors can be used as well. Care is taken not to enter the peritoneal cavity or the lumen of the pantyhose. Once all the epithelium is denuded, we begin purse string suturing of the fibromuscular connective tissue using a delayed absorbable suture like 2 ovicral, creating an intussusception like tunnel. Each purse string suture is placed about one centimeter apart from the next, proximally. Upon tying, a forceps is used to push the apex into the prolapse, as shown here. We continue purse string suturing 
using 2-0 Vicryl in a circumferential fashion. And again, we use a forceps to push in the prolapse as we tie the knot down. Typically, three to four per string sutures are used during this procedure, one centimeter apart to close the vagina. Here, the last per string suture closes the vagina. Now you see it, now you don't. One year after surgery, 85 to 95 percent of patients are satisfied with their procedure, and in one study, 90 percent would choose to have copal glycis again.